Debbie said, I'm going to be uh, really teaching on the manifestation of believing, not just believing. Uh, we've been in these Sunday mornings when I've had the privilege of teaching, uh, we've been looking at and reviewing the manifestations of the Spirit. Uh, as we you know, specifically revelation manifestations. And then last week we began a transi transition uh, into the power or impartation manifestations. As we walk on the word, we, we attempt to live our lives according to God's written word. We get into specific situations. And in those specific situations, uh, God may or may not have revelation, additional information and instructions for us specific to that uh, situation. And then as we accept and carry out that uh, information, there may or may not be a miracle or healing. Um, but the, the revelation manifestations, what they do in that situation, they get us to the cause or the root of the problem or what's going on. And then the power or impartation manifestations get us to God's solution uh, in, the, in the situation. So now we're transitioning from the revelation manifestations into the power manifestations. And we're going to start today uh, talking about the manifestation of believing and like all the other uh, manifestations especially the revelation and impartation manifestations it's not something that you can really understand apart from the other manifestations you don't see the manifestation of believing in the word of god all by itself uh, it's it's always with other manifestations but for teaching purposes, that's what we're focusing on, though, is the manifestation of believing so that you can uh, understand what it is and how it works. The manifestation of believing generally operates in the same pattern as regular believing does. Regular believing, uh, information comes to the mind by way of the five senses, and then that information can be processed by the mind and accept it. Now, it's, it's when I say processed by the mind, so information comes and my mind begins to compare it with things I already know. It's cataloged and compared with other information that I already have. And then that information can be accepted. It's worth noting that information could also be rejected. For instance, Somebody could send me a letter and say they've done all sorts of new research and they have come up with the belief and the theory that the earth is flat. Well, we would reject that. We, you know, we get the information, we process it, and we reject it. The earth is not flat. Um, so that's how believing works. Information is processed by the mind, and when it's accepted, it, then it can be acted upon and any results will follow. That's all believing is. For instance, those of us on the Zoom call, uh, we received an informative email from Charlie talking about this meeting, when it would be, uh, how to get in, all the information necessary for the Zoom call. We accepted that, we processed it, decided it was valid and took action and here we are. Those of you that are in Rockford had something similar. Uh, you, you got information about the meeting today, the fellowship meeting. Your mind received it and processed it, and you accepted it, decided it was valid, and took action to be there. That's as really as simple as believing is. M the mind, information hits the mind by way of the five senses. It's processed. It's you decide it's valid, you accept it, and you take action upon it. Um, it that's, it's very, very simple. That's what believing is. Now, when it's rejected, then we don't believe. We don't believe that information, but we're talking about the manifestation of believing. And generally, that works in the same way that regular believing does. Information is received, accepted, and acted upon. But and I'll be emphasizing this throughout the meeting. 
The manifestation of believing is one of the nine manifestations that's listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 through 10. Uh, it is a manifestation of the spirit. And apart from the spirit, the manifestation of believing is not there. You must have spirit uh, in order to have the manifestation of believing. And the manifestation of believing, while it's very similar to regular believing, is a manifestation of the spirit. You've got to have Holy Spirit and to, to manifest any of the manifestations. We know that. Now, in the case of the manifestation of believing, the information that is received by the mind comes by way of one or more of the three revelation manifestations. That information gets accepted and it's acted upon. Again, it's a manifestation of the spirit. Without Holy Spirit, you cannot have the manifestation of believing. But when you you receive that revelation, the information and instruction from God. You accept it and act upon it. The result is going to be a miracle and healing. Now, the manifestation of believing has to be spiritual because the information and instructions that come by way of the revelation manifestations will be impossible in the natural world. Remember the old song, uh, one of the lines is God specializes in things called impossible. That's the manifestation of believing. It has to be a spiritual manifestation because the information and instructions are going to be impossible in the natural world. Uh, we're going to see this the next time I teach after today will be the introduction to miracles. We have several teachings on miracles. And you'll see that, how it's something happens that's impossible. But it's not impossible because we're talking about God. Because the revelation is impossible in the natural world, apart from the manifestation of believing, you're, you would never accept it as valid. You just wouldn't accept it as valid. And it's worth mentioning here, there's a, a little book, probably all of you have it or at least have access to maybe somehow, it's a, a little book called The Bible Tells Me So. We uh, affectionately refer to it as the blue book. Um, chapter three in there is a, a study in Abundant Living entitled, Are You Limiting God? And I'll be mentioning this once we get into miracles too, but it's worth mentioning now. That would be an, a good study to review. Are You Limiting God? Chapter three of the Bible tells me so. So we're going to read a record from 2 Kings this morning. And it, we're not going to read the entire record. There'll be some verses that I skip just to save on teaching time. It's worth reading the whole thing. We're going to be reading the sections that pertain specifically to the manifestation of believing. And um, well, we'll just read the record and deal with things as it comes up. So in 2 Kings chapter 6, give everybody a chance to turn there. 2 Kings chapter 6, and in verse 24, that's where we begin. It came to pass after this that Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his host and went up and besieged Samaria. Now, Samaria is the capital city of the northern ten tribes of Israel. This is after the split in the nation of Israel had occurred. And Samaria is the capital of the northern 10 tribes. And when he besieges that with his army, that means he surrounds the city. He cuts off all entrance and exit from the city. It's being besieged. In verse 25, and there was a great famine in Samaria. The result of this army surrounding the city and cutting off all lines of communication, cutting off all supply lines, everything that would come into that city. There was a great famine in Samaria. And behold, they besieged it until an ass's head was sold for four score pieces of silver and the fourth part of a cab of dove's dung for five pieces of silver. The net effect of this siege that was laid to Samaria is that 
famine resulted. No supplies could come into the city. And the law of supply and demand takes over. And when de demand is high and supply is very low, and up and up and up and up. That's what happens. There's a, a break in the supply chain. However, it happened, there's a famine. And the end result is prices continue to go up until the very meanest of items just cost a fortune. Verses 26 through uh, 29 or 30 give us an incident of how bad things were. We're not going to read that. We know things were bad. There's a famine. It's you know, Prices are high. And, and the king has finally had it. Verse 30, it came to pass when the king heard the words of the woman, he rent his clothes, passed by upon the wall, and the people looked, and behold, he had sackcloth within upon his flesh. We're going to see that the king has finally decided, I'm done waiting on God. I'm going to, I'm going to cut the head off of this stupid prophet. We'll deal with this some other way. So he, he said, verse 31, God do so and more also to me. If the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, shall stand on him this day. But Elisha sat in his house. Now, Elisha wasn't with the king. The king is, is walking on the wall, and he's finally de decided he's had it. We're going to kill the prophet. We're done waiting on God. Elisha sat in his house. The king sent a man from before him, but ere the messenger came to him, he, that he is Elisha, said to the elders, see how this son of a murderer has sent to take away mine head? Look, when the messenger comes, shut the door and hold him fast at the door. It is not the sound of his master's feet behind him. This is one more example of how God will keep you and can keep you one step ahead of the adversary. The king is sending this messenger to Elisha. The purpose is we're going to get Elisha and we're going to cut his head off. But Elisha knows ahead of time by revelation that this guy is coming and says, we're going to lock the door. We're not letting him in, not letting him in. And verse 33, while he yet talked with them, behold, the messenger came down unto him and he said, behold, this evil is of the Lord. What should I wait for the Lord any longer? They're done waiting for God. They're blaming God for the situation. They're blaming the prophet for the situation. They're done. They're done with them. Verses one and two of chapter seven really belong to chapter six when you read for thought content. Then said Elisha, hear ye the word of the Lord. Now, when you see that phrase, hear ye the word of the Lord, Elisha is going to tell them what the revelation he just got is. He just got information from God, and he believes it, and that's why he's he's declaring it forth. He's got this information from God. He spiritually accepts it, says it's valid, and declares it forth. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Wow, tomorrow about this time. Elisha's revelation says, in a period of about 24 hours, all this whole situation is going to be cleared up. The supply chain issues, the, everything's going to be solved in a period of 24 hours. That would be like, like, now, I want you to understand, this is not revelation. I'm just going to give you an example. That would be me, like me saying, I have revelation from the Lord. No, I don't. I don't. I have revelation from the Lord that by this time tomorrow, within 24 hours, the average price of a gallon of gasoline in the United States is going to be $1.25. That's how drastic this was. That's how drastic it was. That was the revelation. Verse 2. Then a Lord. Now, this isn't the messenger. This was the guy who was in with uh, Elisha and the elders. Then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned. 
So he's a top government official, answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? This man on whom the Lord, on, on whom the king leaned, he does not have spirit. Remember, this is before the day of Pentecost. Spirit, nobody had spirit unless God had placed it on him for specific purposes, tasks, and times. The Elisha had spirit. He had the revelation. And he speaks forth this revelation because he believes it. It's the manifestation of believing. This man does not have spirit. And he recognizes that's impossible. That's impossible. See? He, his mind hears the information, he processes it, and rejects it because it's impossible. That's the exact opposite of the manifestation of belief. Verse 2, the end of the verse 2, and he, Elisha said, behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shall not eat thereof. This man's unbelief is not going to stop it from happening. It's going to stop him from receiving. It doesn't stop the providence of God. It stops him receiving it. Now, verses 3 and 4 introduce us to four leprous men who uh, make a rational decision. They're, they're, they've had it too. They're not going to sit in Samaria any longer. They're going to go to the camp of the Syrians. In verse 5, they rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were coming to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. The siege has been completely lifted. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Now that hadn't really happened, but the Lord made them hear the sound. God intervened. The king of Syria or king of Samaria was done waiting on God, but God wasn't done. Just because somebody gets done waiting on God doesn't mean God is done. God made this whole army that had besieged Samaria to hear this noise, and they believe they're under attack by a multitude of different armies, and they vamoose. Wherefore they arose, verse 7, and fled in the twilight, and left their tents, and their horses, and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. They left everything behind. They just ran to flee for their lives. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink and carried dense silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it, <laughs> came again and entered into another tent and carried dense also and went and hid it. And then once these lepers had provided for themselves, you know, they said in verse 9, one to another, we do not well. This day is a day of good tidings, and we hold our peace. If we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Therefore, now therefore come, let us go. We may go and tell the king's house. So they came and called, they head back to Samaria. They came and called unto the porter of the city and told him, saying, We came to the camp of the Syrians, and behold, there was no man there, neither the voice of man, but horses tied, masses tied, in the tents as they were. And he called the, the porters, they told it in the king's house within, and the king arose in the night and said to his servants, see, even then the king didn't accept it right away. I will now show you what the Syrians have done to us. They know we are hungry, and therefore they are gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the field saying, when they come out of the city, we're going to catch them alive and get into the city. And one of his servants answered and said, let some take, I pray thee, five of the horses that remain, which are left in the city. Behold, they are as all the multitude of Israel that are left in it. Behold, I say, they are even as the multitude of the Israel's lights that are consumed. And let us send and see. He said, look, Let's just send five horses out. We've got basically everybody in, in Israel is in this city. 
Let's send them out and look. Therefore, they took two chariot horses, and the king sent after the horses, the host of the Syrians, and said, Go and see. And they went after them in the Jordan, and lo, the whole way was full of garments and vessels which the Syrians had cast away in their haste. And the messengers returned and told the king. And the people went out and spoiled the tents. They got all the food. They got all the gold. All the, So they got everything. And they brought it back. They spoiled the tents of the Syrians. So a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel. And two measures of barley for a shekel. According to the word of the Lord. And the king appointed the Lord. On whose hand he leaned to have the charge of the gate. The people trod upon him in the gate. He got, it's like one of those Black Friday episodes at a Walmart or something. People are just going crazy and they, they trod upon him in the gate. He was supposed to be in charge to keep control. He just got trampled and he died as the man of God had said, who spake when the king came down to him. And it came to pass as the man of God had spoken to the king, two measures of bar for a shekel and a measure of fine flour for a shekel shall be tomorrow about this time in the gate of the Samaria. The Lord had answered the king, now behold, if the, or answered the man of God and said, behold, if the Lord should make windows of heaven, might such a thing be? And he, the man of God said, behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, shall not eat thereof. And so it fell upon him, the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died. A, one specific situation revelation information from god to the man of god he accepts it believes it and speaks it forth the man who didn't have spirit here's gets the same information not by revelation but from the man of god and says it can't be it's that's invalid it's impossible one man believed one man didn't that's the manifestation of believing the information was impossible it was impossible but it's never impossible when god is involved and it was god the lord who made that army to hear think they hear a whole bunch of armies against them and everything played out just like the man of god said the reason I wanted to read this record, I thought it was a good one to exhibit the manifestation of believing, is because you can see the information that came from God was impossible. It was just impossible. And somebody without the spirit couldn't accept it. But it was impossible information. But the impossible is still possible with God. We'll be talking about that a lot in days to come. When, when it's my turn to teach, when we get into the working of miracles. But see, revelation comes, it's accepted, even though it's impossible, it's accepted, believed, that's the manifestation of believing. And the miracle occurs. Within 24 hours, that whole situation had turned around. Now, let's read another record. Uh, this one will be a little more familiar, I think, to you. But again, it'll show... Uh, the manifestation of believing with information that's impossible. It's the record of Abraham. And we're going to go to Romans chapter four. That's all the manifestation of believing is. In a specific situation, information and instructions come from God that are absolutely impossible in the natural world. But God doesn't just operate in the natural. The spiritual realm is higher than the natural realm. And things that are impossible in the natural realm are still possible in the spiritual. The spiritual realm is not limited to the, the laws and conditions of the natural realm. In, in Romans chapter 4, we're going to read a record of Abraham. Abraham received, it's not the record of Abraham is in the Old Testament, starts in uh, Genesis chapter 12 uh, and, and goes for several, several chapters. God had made specific promises to Abraham and to his wife, Sarah, about uh, for him and his seed after him. 
those promises in the natural world you'll see are impossible. They're just not possible. But it's the manifestation of believing that gets around that. In Romans chapter 4, verse uh, 16, we'll start. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end. The promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before whom him whom he believed, even God who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. You see, God had made promises to Abraham and Sarah, said, you're going to have a son. And it's impossible because Abraham is past the point of potency sexually. His wife, Sarah, was past the point of fertility. It was impossible for them to have children. It was impossible. That's why in verse 18, it says, who against hope, he believed in hope. See, he didn't have any children yet, and there was no hope that he would in the natural world. But against that hope, he believed in hope, the hope that God said you will, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. It's interesting that in some of the Greek texts, this phrase, he considered not his own body, the word not does not appear. In some of the texts, it just reads, he considered his own body now dead and and the deadness of Sarah's womb. See, Abraham knew how old he was. Abraham knew about his physical limitations. Abraham knew that Sarah was past the age of fertility. He knew that all of this was impossible in the natural world. But you'll see he ascribed greater power to God. Yes, it was impossible in the natural realm, but he ascribed greater power to God and believed that what God had promised, he was able to perform. Being not weak in believing, he considered not his own body now dead. He was yet When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith and believing, giving glory to God. He could have staggered if he would have considered the situation, received this information from God, processed it, and decided it was not valid. It's impossible. He could have staggered, but he he didn't stagger. He had the information from God. He accepted it and was strong in belief, giving glory to God, (coughs) being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Did Abraham and Sarah have a son? Yes, they did. Did that son go on to have other children and a great nation come from Abraham? Yes, it did. God's promise was was fulfilled. And it was filled because Abraham had the capacity with spirit to accept the promise of the impossible. What God had told him was impossible, but he Abraham believed God was able to bring it to pass. That is the manifestation of believing. And it's that manifestation of believing that takes our lives into the realm of the miraculous. Now, I started thinking about this and I, you know, I tried to think about my life honestly. And am I ready to, to, am I ready to receive information from God that is absolutely impossible? 
And if I am not ready to receive information from God, that's impossible. Are there some things I could do to help me get to the point where I would receive that and accept it? And I, well, I could think of three things, and there may be more. Um, but number one, speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is my is my spirit bearing witness, God's spirit bearing witness with my spirit that I am a child of God. And if I'm a child of God, he didn't withhold his son. How, why would he withhold anything from me? Speaking in tongues magnifies God. It makes God bigger in my life. So I spend a lot of time and I'm trying to spend more and more time in my life speaking in tongues so that I in, in strengthen myself spiritually. I edify myself spiritually where I could receive impossible information. Number two, I try to practice and really pay attention when the other worship manifestations are being utilized in a fellowship because that's where I get edified in my mind. It's God reminding us. He is with us in every situation. He we can trust him. He will bring things to pass. I try to not sit in a fellowship where those manifestations are and say, oh, wow, we've heard that before. Oh, God said that last time. Oh, the person that spoke in tongues and interpreted just before this person said the same thing. You know, we try to pay attention to it like it is God speaking to us. And then number three, just continue to read, read, read the word of God with believing and accept it. God has done what his word says he has done. He will do what his word says he can do. And we see example after example after example of impossible situations that God pulls believers through. So that's the manifestation of believing. It's receiving information by the revelation manifestations, and that information will be impossible in the natural world. But with God, all things are possible. And so we accept it, we believe it, and take action upon it. And the end result will be healing or a miracle. And I believe you'll see more of this as we continue these teachings. The next time I teach, it will be the introduction to miracles. And I think that'll be a lot of fun. So, Father, thanks for your love and goodness to us. Thanks for the great joy it was to be able to share your word. Thank you for you. everybody here. This was a blessing to them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.